It's common knowledge that the West Virginia Mountaineers are the 15th winningest team all time in college football. It's also fairly common knowledge that they are the winningest team of all time that does not have claim to a national championship. Has that changed? Does West Virginia now have a legit claim to a national title? Pull up a chair, sit back, relax, and let's talk about it. What is up, college sports fans, Big 12 fans, and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome in to another edition of Coos's Corner. Pull that chair up, and let me serve you up another shot of top-shelf college football content. On tap in today's episode, we are talking once again about my favorite team, the West Virginia Mountaineers. And today, the topic is a little different. We're not talking about current-day rosters. We're not talking about recruiting, but we're going to go back in history a little bit and look at the 1922 West Virginia Mountaineer football team, and we're going to talk about whether or not they have a legit claim to a national title. I'm going to go over some information with you here, tell you where I got this from, talk about the other teams who have claimed to the national title, and then I want you to tell me in the comment section, do the Mountaineers, in your opinion, have a legit claim to the national championship? Give me your honest opinion in the comment section. Now, let's get on with it. The first thing I want to point you to is Wikipedia. When you look at Wikipedia, you will see over here to the right of your screen, this is the West Virginia Mountaineer football Wikipedia page. Now, I'm, Wikipedia is not necessarily a legit source at all times because it can be edited by just about anybody. But somebody, when you go down here to the right of your screen, I want you to take a look. Right here where it says claim national titles, it shows one in 1922. So somebody's went in and changed that. I don't know who that was, but I'm going to take a wild guess here and say it was probably one of our favorite West Virginia fans. All Mountaineer fans probably know this guy. His name is Christopher Lambert. He's on Twitter as C.W. Lambert. And he's been talking about this on his Twitter page. As you can see here on his Twitter page, he says, it's official. WVU has been declared the 1922 national champion in football. Now, I'm, I don't know if I'm assuming Lambert put this out there in jest, maybe. But there he's got a photo of the 1922 team, their record, the teams they played, their schedule. They had a 10-0-1 record, seven shutouts, outscored their opponents 267-34, to and were the winners of WVU's first ever bowl game, which was the East-West San Diego Christmas Classic. I think that's what it was called. It was one of only two bowl games that existed at that time to go along with the Rose Bowl, and West Virginia actually won it that year. And they beat, get this, Gonzaga. They beat the Gonzaga 21-13 to in the East-West Christmas Classic on Christmas Day. Now, down here, someone asked Lambert what his source was. He says, the only investigative sports journalist around MTN Sports News, Big12Insider.com, and that is his own page. So I'm assuming he put this in jest. I'm going to give you some data here in a minute that, uh, in my opinion, shows that West Virginia could. Now, we could be like UCF, and we could claim a national title that's not officially in the record books if we wanted to. Uh, and I'm going to tell you whether I think we should or not and whether we should be rewarded for it, be awarded a national title. But go down here. You'll see John Antonio. Most West Virginia fans know John Antonick. He, he writes for WVU Sports. Uh, he's written books. I will say he's also a histo an historian when it comes to West Virginia Mountaineer Athletics. But he says, sorry, wish it, was, wish it was, but not even Spears' best team at WVU. Now, the Spears he's referring to is Clarence Doc Spears, who was the coach of that 1922 team. Uh, I actually did an article over on my website, kuzascorner.com. I'm going to link to that article in the description box. I actually did an article about Clarence Spears himself. Uh, my focus was on him, not necessarily on this 1922 team. But if you want to check that article out and learn more about this very unique coach and one of the best coaches to ever coach at West Virginia, then go check out the article in the description box. Now I'm going to – what we're going to do now is I'm going to go over the records of the teams who actually lay claim to the national championship from 1922. That's Cornell, Princeton and the Cal Golden Bears. Those are the three teams. If you look in the record books right now, those are the three teams that are considered the national champions from that season. West Virginia is not listed in that group. There are some who think West Virginia should at least lay claim to a share of the national title from that season. Now, the first team I'm going to talk about is the Cornell Big Red. Now, Cornell is part of today what is known as the Ivy League. 
back then they were an independent. And, hey, those Ivy League schools back in the early 1920s and back in what we call the good old days, they were actually football powerhouses back then. They were Most of those schools were really good at football. But Cornell had an 8-0 record in 1922. They outscored their opponents 339-27. to Now, I got this information from sportsreference.com, by the way. Now, their strength of schedule was 67th in the country out of 109 teams. And their simple, their simple rating system, which is a metric that sportsreference.com uses that takes in consideration strength of schedule and uh, your average margin of victory. Their simple rating system was third in the entire country from that year, according to sportsreference.com. Now, their games, their wins were St. Bonaventure, Niagara, New Hampshire, Colgate, Columbia, Dartmouth, Albright, and Pennsylvania. Now, of those nine ga- of those eight games, I'm sorry, four of them were against non-major teams, what were considered non-majors. Those were St. Bonaventure, who they beat 55 to 6, Niagara, who they beat 66 to 0, New Hampshire, who they beat 68 to 7, and Albright, who they beat 48 to 14. So there's Cornell. Now, the next team I want to talk about is the Princeton Tigers. Again, they're in today what is known as the Ivy League. Back then, they were an independent. They they also had an 8-0 record in 1922. They outscored their opponents 127-34. to Strength of schedule was fourth in the country, according to sportsreference.com, and their simple rating system metric was eighth in the country, according to sportsreference.com. Their wins were against Johns Hopkins, a non-major, Virginia, Colgate, Maryland, Chicago, Swarthmore, who I've never heard of, to be honest, also a non-major, and then Harvard and Yale. Now, the one thing I'll say about Princeton, of their eight games, at least six of those were victories over major teams, what were considered major teams back in that era. Now, the next team I want to talk about is the Cal Golden Bears, the third team who shared the national title in 1922, according to the record book. Cal had a 9-0 record. They actually played nine games and not eight. They scored 398 points. Their opponent scored 34 points. Their strength of schedule was 89th in the country. So not very good. But their simple rating system was 6th in the country, which means they blew their opponents out. And let's take a look at the teams they beat. They had victories over Santa Clara, Mare Island Marines, St. Mary's, Olympic Club, USC, Washington State, Washington, Nevada, and Stanford. So Cal, even though they had large margins of victory in almost all their wins. Matter of fact, most of their wins were shutouts. Five of those nine games were against non-major opponents. Santa Clara, Mary Island Marines, St. Mary's Olympic Club, and Nevada were all non-major opponents. They only had four wins over major opponents. Those were USC, Washington State, Washington, and Stanford. All of those schools are in what is considered today the Pac-12 back then was considered the Pacific Coast Conference. So. Take that for what it's worth. There are your three teams who shared the national title from 1922. Now, let's take a look, or in your case, a listen, to the West Virginia Mountaineers in their 1922 season. All right, West Virginia, as I mentioned earlier, had a record of 10-0-1. So they actually played 11 games that year. Had no losses, but they did have one tie. They scored a total of 267 points and only allowed 34 points. Their strength of schedule was 63rd in the country, so not great, but it was better than Cal's. However, their simple rating system, according to sportsreference.com, was only 16th in the country, so not as good as any of the other teams I mentioned. So that could be the area where they don't have a legit claim. They did not beat their opponents by as high a margin of victory as some of the other teams on this list. Now, their games, their wins were against West Virginia Wesleyan, a non-major. Marietta, a non-major. Pitt, Washington and Lee was actually their tie. They tied Washington and Lee, who at that time was a member of the Southern Conference. Now they're actually a Division Three school. They're located in Lexington, Virginia. Uh, they also had victories over Rutgers, Cincinnati, Indiana, Virginia, Ohio, Washington, and Jefferson. And, and there again, I mentioned the, the bowl game against Gonzaga. Now, of those victories, Sorry, four were against non-major teams. West Virginia Wesleyan, Marietta, Cincinnati, and Ohio. 
the one thing that could hurt West Virginia in, in having legit claim to this national title, they only beat West Virginia Wesleyan 20 to 3. West Virginia Wesleyan today is a Division II school here in West Virginia. Back then, they were also a non major. They did beat Marietta 55 to 0, so that was a blowout win. They beat Cincinnati 34 to nothing. Not, you know, that's a blowout win, but however, they could have scored more points. When you go back and look at the wins these some of these other teams had over these non-major opponents, some of them were scoring like 70 and 80 points in some of these games. West Virginia didn't do that. And then their win against Ohio was 28 to nothing. So West Virginia won primarily, primarily on defense and running the football in 1922. Now, like I said, they did have the one tie as well. That's a, that's kind of a blemish on their schedule. Now, had they not tied that game, had they won that game, they would have been 11-0. and 0. Maybe, maybe they would have gotten a claim with a national title. Or had they blown out West Virginia Wesley or had larger margins of victory against teams like Ohio or Cincinnati, maybe they could lay claim to a national title. But the one thing they do have that none of the other three teams had on, on that list was a bowl win. Like I mentioned earlier, there were two bowl games back then. There were there was the Rose Bowl, which in that season was played by Penn State and USC, actually. And then there was the East-West game, the East-West Christmas Classic played in San Diego, California. West Virginia won that game over Gonzaga. That two bowl winners that year, and none of them were Cornell, Princeton, or Cal. So if you think that West Virginia – Based on what I, I've just told you, based on the records, based on the strength of schedule, based on the bowl wins and all that, based on everything I just laid out, do you think in your mind West Virginia has a legit claim to a national championship in 1922? I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Once again, West Virginia historian John Antonic disagrees. He thinks they don't. Obviously, Christopher Lambert thinks they do, even though he probably put that tweet out in jest. And the record books, obviously, the historians who make these decisions, who decide national champions, also did not think West Virginia was deserving of that national title. I want to hear your thoughts, my opinion on it. After laying all this out, I don't really think they do either because they tied against the team they should have beaten. Washington and Lee was only 5-3 and three team that season. They should have won that game. And they should have beaten teams like West Virginia Wesleyan by much larger margins of victory than 20 to 3. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Also, guys, if you like this video, please give me the thumbs up button. Please share it out with your friends. Please subscribe to the channel here at Kuzo's Corner. Also, guys, if you want to support this channel and you want to do it financially, there's several different ways you can do it. You can check out my merch store by clicking the link in the description box or clicking one of the photos of my merch below, right below the description box. Click on one of those photos. It takes you to my merch store. There are a lot of different designs to choose from. A lot of different products to choose from. If you want to get you a tank top to get ready for summertime. If you're a hoodie person, you want to get you a hoodie there over there as well. Go check it out. You can become a member of my channel, David Cummings. David, I really appreciate your support. I appreciate your channel membership. Also want to give a shout out to Tim Bo, another loyal channel member, and Big Dan T. Three channel members. I, want, I appreciate your all support. Uh, most of you guys have been with me since uh, almost the beginning of this thing. Also. You can support me financially by hitting the th heart thanks option right below. It's a one-time donation you can make right here to the channel by hitting that heart button with a dollar sign in it right below here. With that being said, I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you tuning into this episode, and until the next one, Q Country Roads.